You open your eyes and find yourself handcuffed in a small, dark room. Your sister is not with you, although you clearly remember walking outside together in the rain. Well, it seems you were kidnapped and now have to get out. You have to solve some riddles to escape, and each time you'll have 10 seconds to think. Are you ready? First, how about getting rid of these handcuffs? You turn around and see three buttons on the wall. A red one, a yellow one, and a green one. One of them will set you free. But if you choose the wrong button, sirens will sound. But, lucky you, there's a note on the wall saying T-D-U-N-O-R-T-E-B. Decide which button you should press. Since you put the letters in the right order, you'll get the red button. Since only one button releases you and the other two are traps, the sign indicates the one that will set you free. You press the red button and the handcuffs fall off. Phew! The first step is complete, but there's more to go. You'll have to find your sister, release her, and then find a way out. You search for the exit. But there are three doors, so you look through the peepholes to decide which route to take. Behind one door, many little robots are poised to attack. Behind the second door, there's a room on fire. And behind the last one, you find a room completely filled with water. Which one should you pick to stay safe? The first one. Although there are robots, they're still super small and probably can't cause you much harm. Well, at least definitely less than the fire or water. So you take a deep breath and with your heart skipping a beat, you enter the first room. The robots attack you, but the first one has a giant red button you step on and it turns them off. The second one you kick really hard and it smashes, hitting the wall. Half a minute later, you're already outside the room, safe and sound, all body parts intact. Success! But what if the robot sent a signal to the people who kidnapped you? You have to hurry. You move forward, crossing the corridor, and here it is again. Three doors, and you have to decide which one to pick. Think carefully for 10 seconds. It can save you a ton of time if you go the right way from the very beginning. So which way should you go? The third door. There's a red finger stains on the doorway. Your sister must have been trying hard to break out. You take that door and find yourself in a narrow hallway. You can see the stains here and make absolutely sure you're going in the right direction. You run for about 20 minutes, continually taking turns. You start feeling a little dizzy, but still can't see an end to this hallway. Another 5 minutes pass. You take another turn and suddenly crash into a metallic door. You try to open it, but it's locked. On a little screen, a red sign appears, asking for a password. Below, there's even a password hint. 12345678. Can you crack the code? There are 17 spaces. After reading the number out loud slowly, you get it. You type number 2, then number 4 three times, 5 sixes, and 7 eighths. The light changes to green, and the door is unlocked. You're in a long and gloomy metal corridor. You want to run, but you force yourself to stay quiet. You're getting close, and you're trying to be as careful and silent as possible. But when you suddenly face a huge and gloomy man standing in front of the next door, your heart drops. You want to run away, but you freeze just right where you are. He's definitely noticed you. You stand speechless, expecting him to grab and handcuff you or knock you unconscious. But instead, he asks, where are you going? You don't know why, but you tell the truth. I want to find my sister. She's 17, blonde. Ah, I've seen her, the man says. She's in this room. They always ignore me and never want to solve my riddles. 
Um, you know, if you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go. You feel such a relief that you can only nod in response. What comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years? A very poetic riddle, but pretty straightforward. It's the letter M. The man smiles and moves to the side, letting you go. You run into the room. Finally, there's your sister. She has her arms and legs tied, and her mouth is sealed. But then, you look around and see two more of your sisters looking precisely the same. It's another trap. You have to decide which sister is the real one. And if you touch the wrong person, the sirens will sound. Can you choose the right sister? Before your sister was kidnapped, you were outside in the rain together. Your sister is the one with the smeared mascara. You reach the girl right in front of you, and the look of relief on her face immediately proves you made the right choice. You untie her hands and legs, unseal her mouth, and she gives you a hug. You grab her hand, and you leave the room together. But here's the riddle man again, and you'll have to solve another one of his riddles. Well, now you have two brains instead of one. Ready? When you take the hole from me, there's still some left. What am I? Both you and your sister answer wholesome. The man smiles again and lets you go. Now you have to find the exit, and you have no idea where to go. You randomly take turns and, in the end, you get lost in the building's labyrinth. After half an hour of wandering around, you realize that you've been going around in circles. You admit that you're lost and can't find a way out. Suddenly, from each of the three directions before you, a man appears. Each man says he was kidnapped too, but escaped and will show you the exit, while the other two men are guardians and will lead you back to your kidnappers. Who should you trust? You notice that the second man has bruises from the handcuffs on his arms, so you decide to believe him. You look at your sister and realize that she noticed it too. You nod, and each of you walks towards one of the other two, and unexpectedly for them, knock them out. The man gives you thumbs up and tells you to follow him. You're back in the labyrinth again, taking turns over and over. Does he really know where to go? How much time did he spend here? You even start worrying if you made the right choice, but then you bump into a massive metal door. To open it, you need to enter the password. But lucky you, there's a hint again. The note is saying 5th of March, 1st of October, 2nd of April, 4th of November. That's why the man was wandering around looking for someone. He couldn't crack the code. Can you? The 5th of March means the 5th letter of the word March, which is H. Similarly, the 1st letter of October is O, the 2nd of April is P, and the 4th of November is E. The password is HOPE. You type it and yes, it works! Great job! The lock clicks and you pull the heavy door open. You did it! You are outside once more. It's early morning, so you spent the whole night inside. But wait, can you hear it? Footsteps! They're after you, and you have to run to a safe place immediately. There are three ways. On the left, there's a dark forest. Straight, there's a city. And on the right, a lake. Which way will you choose? You should definitely run straight to the city, where there are people around. So, what are you waiting for? Run! 
Guess the weight. Jake was buying veggies for his lunch recipe. He purchased a bag of carrots when a shady man approached him and told him, Sir, I don't have any money with me, but I really need those carrots. Let's make a deal. If I write your carrots exact weight on this paper, you'll have to give them to me. If I don't, I'll give you my watch. Jake agreed, thinking there was too small a chance for the stranger to guess the number correctly. The mysterious guy scribbled something on the paper and gave it to Jake. As soon as Jake read it, he handed him the bag of carrots. What did the man write on the paper? Your carrot's exact weight, just like he said he would. (laughs) Will he win the game? Mark was visiting a new game store in his neighborhood. That day, staff members were giving away free games if the customers answered their questions correctly. Mark got in the queue and waited anxiously to see if he'd get the board game he wanted. When his turn arrived, the staff member said, What has six faces but doesn't wear makeup? has 21 eyes but can't see. Mark was relieved when he heard the riddle, and as soon as he answered, he got the game. What was his reply? A dice. The Indivisible Apples Sam went apple picking with his sister, and on the way back, they met their four cousins. There were only five apples in the basket, and Sam had to divide them equally between his sister and their cousins. But one apple had to remain in the basket that he'd take home. How would he divide the apples? He'd give four apples to his four cousins, leaving one apple in the basket for his sister, and walk home with her. The New Retail Store John's friend Susie opened a new retail store, and she came up with a new method to price her stock. A tie costs $15, a belt $20, a beret $25, and a blazer $30. Using this method, how much would a handbag cost? Thirty-five bucks. She's charging five dollars for each letter you need to spell a clothing item. The Apple Tree Simon won the title for being the smartest person in his town. One day, he woke up in an evil scientist basement – oh, who would have thought – who wanted to prove that Simon was cheating at each test. So he broadcasted the event live on social media to prove his point. He said, All right, Simon, I'll ask you a simple math question. A farmer in California has an apple tree in his backyard and supplies the fruit from the tree to a local grocery store. On Sunday, the store owner called the farmer to see how much fruit he'll deliver on Monday. The farmer knows that the main trunk has 26 branches. Each branch has exactly 15 bows, each bow 8 twigs, and each twig 1 fruit. How many oranges will the farmer deliver? Simon immediately gave the correct reply. Can you? None, said Simon. Apple trees don't bear oranges. Well. When partying goes wrong. Mason, Jacob, Susie, and Edward were having a party at Edward's place. The next day, Edward was found unconscious, and none of the three friends knew what happened to him. When the police showed up, they found a note next to Edward's calendar. It read, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11. Immediately, the detective knew who did it. What about you? It was Mason. The note was next to a calendar. Take the first letters, transform them into months, and you get Mason. 3 equals March, 4 equals April, 9 equals September, 10 equals October, 11 equals… hmm, which one is that? Where's Mary? 
Sarah and Jamie were spending the weekend at Mary's house. On Saturday, they went to bed late, and when they woke up the next day, Mary was gone. She left a note on her nightstand that read, Come find me here. Noon dash DL. What does the note point to? A city? A famous mountain? A forest? Or an island? A city. If you unscramble the letters, it reads London. The right door. Mike was driving for 7 hours on the freeway when his tire blew up. He called for help, and they said it will cost him $200 to fix it. He was angry because he was thirsty, hungry, and didn't have any money. In front of him, still sitting in the car, three doors appeared, each with signs above showing where they lead. The first is full of food. Burgers, spaghetti, lobsters, and pizza. Mm. The second is topped with beverages, from energy drinks to sodas and iced teas. The third door has a million dollars in cash. Which door should Mike open first? His car door. (laughs) Who took the car? Mr. Ronald returned home from his three-week vacation only to find his car missing. He left three of his employees at work to take care of the house, but none of them were there when he returned. To catch them off guard, Mr. Ronald video called each one. Sean said he was on the bus back home after a long night out. George said he was heading to school for his lecture, but he could pop by to help him find his car. Chris said he had just arrived at his hotel room in Italy and had no idea what happened with the vehicle. Right away, Mr. Ronald knew who was lying. It was Chris. The clock behind him showed the exact same time as the one on his phone. He wasn't in Italy. The correct path. Luke was hiking in the mountains for two days when he got lost. He came across two paths. One leads to a nearby town, and the other one will get him lost forever. There are two twin girls there who know which way leads to the town. Luke can only ask them one question, but there's a catch. One of the girls always lies, and the other always tells the truth. And Luke doesn't know which one will be truthful. 25 minutes later, Luke arrived at the nearby town. What did he ask the girls? If I ask your sister for the correct path, which one would she show me? They'll both point in the same direction, which means Luke took the path they didn't point at. Where's he hiding? Jim escaped from prison on Saturday. The police had been patrolling the town he was last seen in until they got a tip. A neighbor saw him entering one of these three houses, but he couldn't remember which one. The police took a closer look at the houses and arrested him. How did they find out the correct house? It's the last one on the right. The car is facing the road a common technique people on the run use to get away without losing time. Where does she live? Mia left her mother's home because they had a big argument. Her mother wanted to know where her daughter was going. But when she got back home from work on Tuesday, Mia was still missing. Mia didn't have a phone, and her mom didn't know where she went. Two hours later, she found out where she was staying. How? She dialed the last number on the phone and told the person on the other side that they'd won the lottery. She told them they needed their name and address to give them the prize. Which is the correct door? Shane is an archaeologist who snuck into some underground caves in Egypt. When the guards spotted him, they started chasing him. He ran fast and came across, ooh, guess what, three doors. Behind the first one were four aggressive crocodiles. Behind the second was an explosive device that would go off in 5 minutes. 
and behind the third was a dirty pond filled with bacteria and parasites. Which door should he pick? The second door. But because the guards were coming quickly, he should move the device to the room with the crocodiles and then run away to avoid being caught. The Lost Suitcase Jenna and Neil got back from their holidays in Hawaii. Upon returning, they discovered that their suitcase never made it into the baggage claim area. It was either lost or taken by somebody. The briefcase had a lock on it. When airport security showed up, they questioned three people with some convincing alibis. The steward said he checked the plane and couldn't find any luggage. The captain said the suitcase was probably forgotten in Hawaii, but nobody would open it because it was locked. The airport security guard said he just called the airport in Hawaii, and nobody knew what happened. Immediately, the police arrested the captain. Why? He knew the suitcase was locked, but nobody told him that. The break-in Susan's apartment was broken into the day before Halloween. When she went home from work and saw the mess, she called the police. The door didn't have any signs of a break-in, just an open window. The detectives questioned three of her neighbors. Mrs. Ruth was knitting a pair of gloves for her great-granddaughter. Michael said he was working a 14-hour shift the day before, and he was sleeping all day. Dennis said he had broken his leg and didn't leave his home for three weeks. The police immediately knew who was guilty. It was Michael. He was the only one able to climb into a window. Wait a minute, you don't think Granny could do that? You should see her doing burpees. Hmm. Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one, a lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. The fourth is a 15th floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, 
all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting, but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently, because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, We don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, it would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer? The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick?
The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. The next riddle Adam has to solve is a logic one. One wizard makes his prisoners choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly dragon. Behind the other, a chest with gold. Pick the right door and you'll become a rich person and will be allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, you aren't likely to survive. There are two signs on the doors. One always lies, the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, the treasure is here, the dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, the treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where is the gold? The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Adam knows the show must go on, but where should he go next? The room he's in has four doors, one in each of its walls. After looking around, he notices a note in the corner. He picks it up and sees a strange inscription. After thinking for a while, he opens some application on his phone, looks at it, and leaves through one of the doors. What does the inscription mean, and what application is it? Adam turned the note upside down. Now it read south. Then he used a compass app on his phone to find out which door was leading to the south. The guy found himself facing the last challenge. It was another detective case. Ruth was moving home. While she was busy with boxes, someone took her laptop. The girl went over to her new neighbors. Perhaps one of them had seen something. Eric told her he had been staying at home with a high fever for the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan explained he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Adam is an observant guy. He immediately noticed that Jonathan's car was covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He wasn't at work. Finally, Adam gets back to the main hall. He's passed all the challenges and cracked all the riddles. Well, I guess he's about to become a millionaire. And waiting for him inside is the tax man. Oh boy! Hey, Justin's dream is about to come true. He's a trainee at the police department. To become a real detective, though, he has to pass a challenge. It consists of the hardest detective riddles. And here's the first one. The police had been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, in a weak voice and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he'd spend these last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jesse told the detectives he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's behind the accident with Kyle? Justin is an attentive guy. He immediately noticed that Billy had showed just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Now, Justin is given a note with several numbers on it. He has to figure out the missing one. It's the code to the safe with the evidence. He needs to crack the next case. 53653... Hmm... It didn't take Justin Lawn to understand the missing number is 7. He needed to get subsequent 536 and 537. The safe's open. Justin sees a folder with the case he needs to solve next. 
Mr. White, a rich businessman, disappeared from his bedroom. But he managed to leave a note. It read, the 1st of July, the 4th of January, the 1st of December, the 8th of February. The police questioned the people who were in the house at that time. Judy, Mr. White's wife, said, I'm shocked! My husband was always so careful. Sadly, I don't know anything. I was away staying at my parents. Logan, Mr. White's secretary, told the police he had been working on the report for his boss and hadn't left his study. And Rose, Mr. White's daughter, answered, I was having guests. We didn't leave my room. The case is still unsolved. Can Justin crack it? The one behind Mr. White's disappearance is his wife. The 1st of July means the letter J. The 4th of January, U. The 1st of December, D. And the 8th of February, Y. All together, it's Judy. The next day, Justin was questioning Mary, a suspect in a tricky smuggling case. The girl refused to talk. At some moment, she shouted, Right now, I'd drown my phone in this cup filled with coffee, and you'll never find out the truth. But Justin was totally unbothered by her threat. Why? The cup was filled with coffee beans. They would do no harm to the gadget. A shoe shiner was arrested and taken to the police station where Justin worked. The man was shouting he was an honest person. He cleaned people's shoes for free. His clients paid him of their own will. But Justin soon realized which trick the shoe shiner used. The man cleaned one shoe for free. Nobody wanted to look untidy in just one clean shoe, and paid him for shining the other one. Once, Justin's boss called his wife and told her he'd come back home at 8 o'clock. They had no plans for the evening whatsoever. The man was at home almost on time, at 5 minutes past 8. But his wife was furious. The boss was confused. When he came to work the next day, he asked Justin to explain to him why his wife had been so angry. Justin told his boss, Well, your wife expected you to come home at 8 p.m., but you came at 8 in the morning. Justin was sent to patrol the streets. While walking, he saw a weird picture. A man went out of a house with a bucket of water, shouted, and poured this water on the sidewalk. It took Justin some time to figure out why he had done it. The man had been planning to wash his car. But while he was away, it got stolen. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. And Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there. But by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said that he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boot. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third security guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. Justin's next suspect was a young woman. The guy hadn't seen her yet, but he had her photo. When he was looking at this picture, he felt something was wrong, but couldn't figure out what exactly. Then, all of a sudden, it dawned on him. What did Justin realize? (laughs) 
the girl was inside the house, but the door was blocked from the outside. How did she get in and out of the house? Through the second floor window? Unlikely. A notorious criminal escaped from a 150-foot tower. Someone had managed to get him a pair of scissors and a rope. Justin found out that the rope was just 75 feet long, and the criminal had cut it in the middle. Now, the future detective needs to understand how it helped the man get away. The criminal indeed cut the rope in the middle, but not across. He made the cut along the rope, tied its two parts together, and got down to the ground without any problems. A new case for Justin. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. All four suspects are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy took his cat for a walk. And Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who was behind the car theft? Alan. It was October. At 10 p.m., it would be too dark to play badminton. An important document is missing, and Justin has to find it before his boss comes back from his vacation. The guy had found out only three people could take the document. At the moment when the papers disappeared, Randy was in his office, analyzing a new case. Johnny was taking a shower before his regular gym workout. And Kayla was at her firearms training. Who took the document? It was Johnny. Who takes a shower before a workout? Airport authorities suspected a gold smuggler was going to fly out from their airport. Justin was sent there to help. The suspect was stopped at the customs. But try as they might, security officers couldn't find anything suspicious in his suitcase, just some personal belongings. They had to let the man go. But once he picked up his suitcase and started to walk away, Justin realized the man did have the gold. How did he understand it? There were just a few things in the suitcase, meaning the man had to carry it with ease. But he used both his hands to handle it. It means there must be something heavy hidden inside. Justin finished his working day and decided to drop by his favorite coffee shop. But while he was ordering his cappuccino, someone took his wallet. He only saw a man's retreating figure. Justin ran after him, but the man was already driving away in a black car. Our future detective jumped in his own car and started to follow him. He couldn't drive too fast since it was raining. In 10 minutes, the black car disappeared around the corner. When Justin got there, he saw three similar black cars parked in front of the apartment building. It didn't take him long to understand which car belonged to the thief. How did he find it out if he didn't see the man's license? The ground under the first and third cars is dry, but beneath the second car, it's wet. It means its owner has just arrived. A man came to the police station, and Justin was sent to talk to him. He claimed he had been sold a fake coin. The seller told him it was ancient, and the man believed him. But when he came home, he realized he had been fooled. Justin threw just one glance at the coin and agreed with the man. Why? The coin had a 15 BCE mark on it. But people who lived at that time couldn't know it was before the current era. Hey, dreams do come true! Justin's probation period is over, and he's now a real detective.